I've realized I haven't just broken my arm once. I haven't just broken my arm twice, which is a coincidence. I've broken my arm three times, which is a pattern. So I know, I'm convinced that I'm cursed. Hi, it's Tybug and welcome back to my channel. Today I have something special for you. It's a story time. I thought I was cursed because I broke my arm three times in a very short period of time. So I do this some kind of like weird thing that it only works with my memory. I remember things by how it corresponds with what grade I was in instead of how old I was. The first time I broke my arm was in fifth grade. So we were at a tournament and we I think we played three games each day. This is seven years ago, so it's kind of hard for me to remember. But I remember the time when I knew it was broken. So in practices, my wrist was already hurting, so I would just put the brace on when I wasn't in basketball and leave that on and be like, cool, I'm fine, no worries. So then at the tournament, we played the first game, and the first game is wiped from my memory. I have no idea what happened, but I'm pretty sure we won. Let's just say we won. Second game, we won too, but my wrist was really hurting at this point. The third game, oh, the third game. I'm not gonna reveal what team we we're playing against, but picture this. The girls are all like two feet taller than me. They weigh like 100 pounds more than me. When I was in fifth grade, I only weighed like 80 pounds. I was a tiny, tiny munchkin. Who let me play basketball? Who put me in Taekwondo? I'm too little for all of this. But they put me in anyways. So I'm going up against this giant team and I am playing at the same intensity as I always do. So the girls who I'm playing against see this feisty little munchkin attacking their ankles and they're like, let's destroy her. I'm going up for a rebound, and all of a sudden I just hear the, feel this massive weight come on to me, and I go rocketing into the bleachers. Now not only are the bleachers metal, the bleachers are folded up, so it's just one solid wall that I go rocketing into. And you know what I did? Did I stay down? Did I just be like, oh my god, I just got body slammed into a wall. I get back up, I'm off the court by the way, I get back up, I run back onto the court, steal the ball with my barely functioning wrist, and get back into the game. And I finish the game. I don't think we won that game by the way, which is kind of sad considering what I sacrificed. And I don't really remember how everyone reacted to that, honestly. I think everyone was like, oh she'll get up because she always gets up. Captain Marvel? We're behind the building and we're having our snacks and I'm kind of holding my wrist like, um, can I get my brace please? My wrist very much hurts. By the way, this isn't the right wrist. I broke my right wrist. Get it? Ha <laughs> ha. So I have my right wrist and it's wrapped up and I'm like, huh, should I get some help? But I'm not saying this to anyone. Like everyone just thinks I'm Fine. My mom and I are in the car and I'm sitting in the back seat because you remember I'm a munchkin and I cannot sit in the front seat and I'm holding my wrist still and I'm, I'm talking to my mom and I'm just like, uh, I think we need to go to the hospital. But they x-ray it and they're like, oh, it's a sprain, you're fine. And I'm like, oh, okay, awesome. And I go home. But here's the thing, on my team, we were a disaster team, honestly. Another girl broke her leg. So she's in a cast. Another girl broke her arm. So she's in a cast too. These two girls are in my grade and have broken bones. And I tell them about my wrist. And they say, you should go see our orthopedist. Is it an orthopedist? You should go see our guy and get it checked out. I go to the orthopedist. And guess what the orthopedist says once he gets my x-ray? Oh yeah, this is broken. What? This hospital says it's a sprain, and this hospital says it's broken. So what is it? 
obviously I'm gonna trust the orthopedist because he specializes in bones for little people. Here's the credit to the other hospital. It was just a hairline fracture, so it was very minute, very small. So it's okay, you missed it, it's fine. So I go back to school the next day with a cast. And I got a purple cast because purple is my favorite color. And you know the fun thing about getting a cast is everyone wants to sign it, even if they're not your friends. And you can't really say no and be like, who are you? You are not my friend. You were not my friend before I broke my arm, and you will not be my friend after I break my arm. So why would I want your name on my cast? But you know, there's three people in my grade now who have broken bones, and everyone wants to sign it. And like, it was kind of a competition between us girls, like, who can get more people to sign their cast? And you know, it wasn't fair because that one girl had a broken leg, so she had a lot of real estate. But it's okay. You broke your leg. I just broke my arm, and it was just a hairline fracture. So like, I only had a cast for a month. And that was the first time I broke my arm in fifth grade. And I thought this would be a one-shot thing, no more bro broken bones after that, because I already dealt with it. I don't need another broken bone. Wouldn't you imagine my surprise when I broke my arm in seventh grade? Now, as far as embarrassing stories go for breaking your arm, that isn't that bad. I got body slammed, so it's understa body slammed into the bleachers, mind you. So it's understandable that my flimsy bones broke. But when I broke my arm in seventh grade, <laughs> let me tell you, I had to make up stories on how I broke my arm because it is, <laughs> it is so embarrassing on how I broke my arm a second time. So, I have a husky and I like to walk my husky, but she has a lot more energy than me. So, I'm cringing already. So I had this bright idea that why don't I just scooter and pull, have my dog pull me along? Nothing can go wrong with that, right? And nothing did go wrong. Plot twist. But here's the thing. I live on a very steep incline. So that means there's a very steep decline. And I thought it was so fun having my dog pull me around on the scooter that I would do it by myself sometimes. Let me tell you, what a mistake. So I'm scootering up the hill, pushing it, working my little legs, just chilling, and then I get to the top of the hill. And I'm like, now's when I'm gonna go down. Now's when I'm gonna rock it down and live my best life. And I did this weird thing where I didn't scooter on the road, I scootered on the sidewalk, which is kind of idiotic considering that the sidewalk isn't all even and there's always those cracks. And you know, like I was mindful of that. I knew there were cracks in the sidewalk. So like I would watch out for it and I'd be like, oh, gotta slow down here. I'm on the sidewalk, going down, weaving around the cracks. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the sidewalk, I see a plant and I'm like, I can't just scooter around the plant. I can't just run over the plant. I can't do this. So I hop off the sidewalk and I'm going down the road. Like, bye plant, I just saved your life. And then I turn the scooter and I'm gonna get back up onto the sidewalk. But you know what I forgot going back up onto the sidewalk? The road and the sidewalk aren't at the same level, Ty. The road and the sidewalk don't conjoin like this, Ty. The road and the sidewalk can join like this. So there's a sizable gap there, you know? And I'm just thinking about this plant I saved the life of, this potted plant that I didn't run over with my scooter going down a hill. And I'm just like, ha <laughs> I can't even tell you what happened. The pain was so blinding that it was just white. I imagine I flipped off my scooter and landed on the sidewalk. I don't even know what happened. Cause you know what I remember next? The neighbor whose plant I just saved ringing the doorbell of my house saying, I think your daughter's hurt to my mother. And I'm just sitting there like, what just happened? Is the plant okay? Is the plant alive? 
Did I get my scooter back, by the way? I think I did. Did she, like, carry my scooter back? Or was, like, I, like, carrying my arm and my scooter, like, I'm fine. Let me scooter down the rest of the hill. This pain is significantly worse, and I'm pretty sure I got a concussion on that fall. But we'll never know. Maybe we do know. But I don't know. But this pain, I was like, I just saved the plot's plot. <laughs> I just saved a planted pot's life. This is my sacrifice. I am a martyr. No, that is so embarrassing. I broke my arm for a potted plant. I go to the hospital, the same hospital where my orthopedist is at, but I'm in the emergency room. And they look up, you know that thing where they ask you at the emergency room, oh, do you have a record here? And me and my mom are just like, they add to my record that I have another broken bone. And this time at this hospital, they were accurate. They knew I actually broke my bone. But I mean, it wasn't that hard to not tell that my arm was broken, you know? <laughs> um, and, but guess what? It was my right arm again. The second broken bone in my right arm. But it was, I think this bone I broke the first time and then this bone I broke the second time. So I broke different bones, the same arm. When I went to go see my orthopedist after I got wrapped up at the ER and a couple of days passed, he was like, I knew you were coming. I heard about it from the ER people. They were talking about you. So I got my purple cast. But here's the thing, going back to school, I can't tell people I broke my arm saving a potted plant. People would laugh at me. I'm in middle school. I would be known as the potted plant girl. You know what my genius mind comes up with when I go back to school and people are like, oh my God, you broke your arm again? What happened? I saved a dog's life. It was in the middle of the road and I was scootering down and I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I need to save this dog's life. So I got out of the way and I fell saving its life and I broke my arm. I know I'm like a hero. Like how is that any cooler? I didn't even, in that story, there's like no connection between the dog and saving a life. It's just like there was a dog there and I was like, oh, let me just go to run the dog. That's not any cooler than saving a potted plant's life. I just replaced the prop. <laughs> like I added into my story, like there was a car coming and I scootered in front of the car to stop it before it hit the dog. No, just, I saw a dog and I didn't want to hit the dog with my scooter so I went the other way. And that's how I broke my arm. That was two times I broke my arm now. And I thought, surely this is it. But you know what? I didn't change anything about my behavior. I didn't change anything about myself. So it was pretty likely I was gonna break my arm again. I don't know what I was expecting entering ninth grade. A lot of the ninth graders who played basketball at the time were put on the intermediate team. Me and my friend we started off on the intermediate team, but the coach for the varsity team already told us that he wanted to move us up. So we're like, cool, no problem. We'll move up, no problem. No problem, Ty. Really? No problem? You don't think there's like a little problem you're forgetting about? You know, like how you were tiny and have bones the size of toothpicks and how you're feisty and there's no way that you can go up against seniors and juniors and even sophomores when you were the size of a Sour Patch Kid. So I'm playing pretty well on the varsity team. I'm like thriving and I'm still playing as a guard. And the coaches see my improvement and they're like, we're gonna start training you to be the backup point guard. We actually qualified for states that year. The first time we've qualified for states, ever for our school. We're in our second game. And this is when everything goes downhill, honestly. I was really trying hard for this game because I wanted, once the graduating class went out, I wanted to be the point guard. At that game, when we were warming up, I was scoring basket after basket, three pointers, so well. I was doing so well in the warm ups. So I was like, 
This game is my cup of tea. This is when I'm gonna show everybody that I'm your go-to. I'm playing at like 100%. I'm playing <laughs> fast. I'm playing rebounding, boxing out. I'm playing aggressively. Instead of at 100%, I'm like at 200%. I'm throwing out all the tricks. Now we're at the point in the game where like, it's pretty close between the two scores and I need to put in extra effort. So I kick it up another notch that I don't think I'm physically capable of doing. So we're doing a, I think it was a free throw actually, but I wasn't the person who fouled. So I got that on my side at least. Or I was always at the top notch to do rebound, so I would rebound the person doing the free throw. The ball goes up, it touches, I slide in front of her. But this girl doing the free throw must be Hulk or something, because when she hits it off the backboard, it comes ricocheting back real fast. And I have like a split second to think about it. Do I let it pelt me in the face? Do I let it pelt me in the chest? Or do I step out of the way and let her get it? But none of this computes in my brain. None of this connects. None of this fires quick enough for me to think of something. So while I'm block boxing her out, my other hand goes up like, stop. Like I have superpowers or something. Like my brain that's not fast enough to make a knowledgeable decision is super enough to stop it with my mind. Obviously, I didn't get my superhero origin story there. So the ball ricocheting off the backboard just goes <coughs> right into my hand. And this is, isn't as painful as the, first, the second time I broke my arm. It's not like a blinding pain or whatever where like I feel out of it. It's just a quick flash, so you know, like a camera flash. And I'm like, oh, that happens. And then I'm like, gotta get it back onto the other side so I can help my team out. So I'm running down there. I'm like, something's wrong. I can't control my wrist. And I turn to my coaches on the bench and I'm like, um, can I take a break real fast? I just need a break. They call a timeout. They take me out, they replace me. And I go up to the trainer. And I'm like, I can't feel my wrist. I don't know what's happening. So you know what she does? She just tapes it up super tight. One, two, three. Super tight. I still can't feel it. I still can't control it. But you know what I do? I go back up to the coaches and I'm like, I'm ready. I can go back in. I don't really remember what happened after that because I think that's when the pain got to me because then my brain just blocks all that out. It's like, she was in some pretty excruciating pain, but she doesn't want to remember that, so let's not let her remember that. Now, it's after the game, and I don't even bother going to the hospital, because I already know. I got a good rapport with my orthopedist. He'll help me out and save me the trip to the hospital. I go in, and they x-ray my arm, it's my left arm this time, so my right arm's in the clear. But I think the left arm just felt a little left out. Wanted to catch up. Wanted to be part of the team. Not only is this bone broken, not only is this bone broken, but so is this bone. I broke all three bones in my wrist off of a ricocheting rebound that I tried to stop with my mind. That's how I break all the bones in my wrist? Off of something so minute, something I've done thousands of times. And that's how it breaks every single bone in my wrist? Does Nick Fury need to get in contact with that girl who threw the free throw? Because that is some super strength. Cause this doesn't make sense to me, even now. I'm like, how in the hell did that happen? Unless my pain tolerance is just that high that I didn't just break my arm that game, but I broke my arm the previous games too. So like, 
it was a combination of all the games that broke my arm and not wasn't just that thing. But how did that happen? So I get a cast and I'm like, it's time to change it up. I'm in high school now. I'm a ninth grader. I broke my arm two times already in seventh grade and fifth grade. Those two coincidences. I'm gonna get a blue cast. So I go back to school and I have my cast hidden in a jacket because I'm like, this is embarrassing. I need to stop breaking bones because now people are going to start knowing me as the person who breaks bones. Foreshadowing. I had to wear the cast on my left arm for two months. They go to check it. They take the cast off after the two months. They go to check it and they're like, yikes, it's still broken. I mean, it's repaired a little bit, but it's still pretty bad. So we're gonna put you in a cast again for another month. So I get a new cast. But here's the thing, when your arm's in a cast, it starts to shrink. So they put on the second cast and I'm like, I cannot feel my arm, not because it's broken, but because the cast is too tight. So they took that cast off. I think I was just being a little dramatic because I had to get another cast on. We'll never know what was going through my mind then, but they put me in another cast. Mind you, I got a blue cast again because I wanted to keep the pattern alive. I got two purple casts, might as well get two blue casts. I come to school with my new cast and I see everyone with their Sharpies and I'm like, you know what? No, nobody is signing my cast this time. I'm going to have a pristine plain blue cast for the last month. Maybe the next time I break my arm, you guys can sign it because by now I've realized I haven't just broken my arm once. I haven't just broken my arm twice, which is a coincidence. I've broken my arm three times, which is a pattern. And it's not just like some random odd pattern. It's a pattern that's happened every other year. So I know, I'm convinced that I'm cursed. That when I get to 11th grade, something is breaking. Something will be broken. Guess you're wondering how the story ends, right? Cause it's a curse. I think I'm cursed. Surely I broke my arm in the 11th grade. Well, you would be wrong. Cause the universe was like, oh no, she caught on. We can't have her expecting it. So you know what they did? Do you know what the universe did for me? To gift me, to make me Wonderful in how I am today? They decided to throw me a curveball and hit me in the 10th grade. I think that hit stopped the curse. But man oh man, did that hit stop a lot of things. And if you want to hear the story on that, like and subscribe. <laughs> oh, that's such a thing to do. But yeah, this has gotten too long and I can't tell you the story of how the universe ended my curse unless you guys want to see that. I broke my arm three times in the span of six years and because I was convinced it was a pattern, I thought I was cursed. That is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was entertaining because I went through a lot of pain so I could be a YouTuber. You know, at the time when this was all happening, this wasn't going through my brain like, oh man, this would be an awesome story for YouTube. You know what was going through my brain? The universe has it out for me! The universe doesn't have it out for me. You know who has it out for me? This all happened because I was a little rascal. I still am a little rascal. See you guys next week or the week after. Love you, bye!